Okay, good morning colleagues. Good morning. It's great today that we've got a staff room packed full of students because this is what we're celebrating today. And first thing I want to start with is at times you start reflecting back upon your career and I sort of look back at when I started here at South Dartmoor nearly three years ago now. And I do remember and some of those key moments in time, some of those key students that you reflect upon. And one of those individuals, I remember that when I, one of my first PE lessons that I taught here was a football lesson. And I remember, to this day, I'd seeing a student who showed so much promise and talent. Now, I would like to say it was as a result of my expert teaching that has got this individual where he is today. But I'd like to first introduce Alex. Now, lots of you know Alex. And what you, and I hope you're aware of, is what his dedication and commitment has resulted in. And his dedication and commitment has resulted in him representing his country in a sport that he is passionate about. And I'm pleased to say that Alex has now been selected to represent the England Under-20 CP football squad, which is just an absolute fantastic achievement. Now, as a result of that as well, Alex was invited to go to Rio, Rio de Janeiro, and to represent the England under-20 team. Now, this tournament in Rio is a tournament which is used for Team GB to identify promising talent to represent Team GB in the 2016 Olympics. Now, Alex was a key player in that team. The England team played a, a team from Rio de Janeiro, and the first game, they won 5-1. Um, I also went on, and a Alex is part of the Talented Athletes Scholarship Team, and I went onto their website just to have a look at some of the comments that had been made, and I'm really pleased to say that Alex was actually um, nominated and his name was raised in that article. And it stated that the first day of competition for the GB team brought some outstanding performances and plenty of opportunities to celebrate. The cerebral palsy side uh, were the first in action and played in warm conditions with the sun coming out for the first time on the trip. They faced a promising Rio de Janeiro team, but a promising opening performance saw them ease a 5-1 victory. Captain and current TAS athlete George Fletcher was among the goal scorers, scoring twice, as his side got off to a winning start. A solid debut in goal by Giles Moore and an impressive display from Alex Woodgates, who came on as a substitute, ensured that the team would go on to their next game in full confidence. So Alex made a significant impact in that team and I'd like us to all congratulate Alex for where he's got now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, as I said, unfortunately, I, from my PE teacher, I can't take credit for Alex's performances. But some people who can, uh, we've got Chris, who's joined us as well today. Unfortunately, Colin can't be here. And as part of the South Dartmoor Football Academy, they've been doing a lot of work with Alex, supporting him in his technique. They've been doing various video analysis work as well. So also on behalf of South Dartmoor, Chris, thank you for all the work that you've been doing as well. So thank you very much. Some more sporting successes now. I'd like to pass you over to Mr. Dinny. Can I just come in? Oh, here? sorry. sorry. Now Miss Hember would like the, the, the limelight. I'd just like to interject because I taught Alex football in year seven. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, he is a Beltor student. So I'm very, very proud and very honoured. So stand up again, Alex. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All over here. All over here. We've got a fantastic event at lunchtime, but apart from that, that's in the ten spells of Honey. Um, the badminton team for the sixth form. This is the sort of inaugural event that happened, and I can only see two players. And there should be a few more. So could Jack and Rory come over, please? Because our sixth form team were third in the whole of Devon. And as you, can, you know, Rory isn't quite sixth form, but he is under 19, so that's why he went. So where's the rest of your team, please? 
Jack? No idea. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Could you just name everybody in the team? Because then um, you want me to stop talking right now. Me, Rory, Jack, Jarvis, Harry, Boston, and then for the girls' team there was Summer Bennett, Shannon Chaplin, um, Sadie, Sadie Harriet, Emily, Emily. Emily. Olivia. Yeah. Okay. Really good at speaking, I think, but they're not well taught students. <laughs> <laughs> but I obviously have given them all of my advice and expertise and wisdom. So well done, you guys are brilliant. Third in Devon is fantastic. Wow. <laughs> okay. Now, now over to Mr. Dinny. Um, we've we've also got cricketers and cross country runners to recognise. I don't think they're all in Beltor, but probably that, that claim will come in a minute. Um, cross country, first of all, tough course at Stover a few weeks ago, and um, we got 16 students invited up today, and that's because they've all finished in the top 20 in their age group, and that means they get to represent South Devon at the Devon County Cross Country Championships. Particularly well done to the Year 7 girls and the Year 10 and 11 girls. It's a bit of a drag doing cross country. When you're in Year 10 and 11, you're worried about other things a little bit more. To get a whole team out and for them to both those teams won their competitions was absolutely brilliant. Um, Georgia Small was third in the whole of, of South Devon and Joe Turner was third in the whole of South Devon. So was Natasha Smith in their respective races. And Georgia, um, sorry, and Amy Smart in Year 8 was actually second silver medalist in her competition. So could all the cross country runners just stand up and get a round of applause, please? All of them, all of them. Devon Championships are in January, so I'm sure they'll be training hard over the Christmas period. All right? Okay, Emily? Yeah. Um, and then the cricketers. Uh, recently, there have been some indoor cricket competitions. We've got our under-13 boys up here this week. They had a fantastic competition, won every game. Mr. Viva said, well, I said, well, what are the results? And he just said, we won every game by a mile. Um, in the final, I played Newton Abbott College. I think we scored 70-plus and got Newton Abbott out. Or, or at the end of their overs, they were on about 30. So the Year 7 boys, we've got... Um, is our captain here? Sam Taylor, is he here? No, he isn't. Okay, they've won a nice trophy there, so could the year seven, uh, sorry, under 13 boys cricket stand up and get a round of applause as well? Okay. Congratulations. Well done. Can I give that to you on behalf of the team then, okay? Well done, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, also, we've got a range of students who've been doing some uh, outstanding work regarding a Year 9 Holocaust project, and I'd like to ask Sarah to come up and speak on behalf of the students, please. Yeah, we've got a number of students who've um, these are home learning projects that they've done in response to the suffering of the Jewish people. Sarah. Um, and then first, I'd like to call Adam, can you plug in your project? And while I'm just plugging in the project, where's Matt? Matt, can you hold up your project and, and just give a brief explanation of what you've done? Right, so this is Matt's project. Um, I wanted to represent how the Nazis took stuff away from the Jews, so the Nazis are re represented in the Black Flames and the Jewish Styles didn't burn a bit because they got people And what have you written in the Hebrew? Um, there is always hope. And Adam, are you ready? Close to our heart, were destroyed by the Nazis. 
And we've got Ellie Ingham's Hill's poem, which is going to be re read by Rose. Oh. Okay, so. some tissues. <laughs> and we've got a diary. Oh yeah, Alice, can you show that? Okay, show the diary. Um, I did a diary because um, I wanted to show the innocent lives of the Jewish children that were um, situated in Germany at the time. Um, and it goes through the different stages of like what happens before the war, um, before she gets sent off to a concentration camp to die. Um, her sister writes a um, note at the back just explaining how she died and um, how important it is to remember um, about the Jewish people that were in the war um, because we can learn from it. Come on, so they at least know who you are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Ellie doesn't want to read it, but it's an excellent poem, so I thought that I'd read it for her. Um, she wrote, I heard a cry, a very loud shriek, a deprived child from way down the street. The poor lost soul with no life ahead had to play by the rules or could end up dead. The little boy or girl who used to be so free, now with a painted yellow star and no identity. The glowing star, as bright as the sun, a significant symbol of the crime the child had done. But what crime was this? Punished for being a Jew. Surely this kid was no different from me or you. However, the Nazis believed, if you weren't the correct race, you should be gone, gone without a trace. Beaten, shot, or gassed, this was not your decision. But don't worry, you'd be killed with precision. Over before you knew it, life wasted in an instant. It's sad to understand your death was part of one big system. I heard a cry, a very loud shriek, a deprived child from way above me. That's some really insightful and thought-provoking work by the Year 9 students, so thank you very much, and also thank you to the RS department as well. Um, makes you sort of reflect and think how lucky we are, doesn't it? And uh, one of those sort of things and one of the opportunities that we've got this weekend, and I'd like to use an opportunity to remind you, is that we've got our first Christmas fair taking place on Sunday between 10 and 4.30. And I've been asked to remind you, if you can come along, to bring plenty of cash and your checkbooks. Um, there will be a range of different uh, activities and uh, professional trade stands to take part in, from driftwood crafts, sweets and desserts, body shop, more chocolate, hobby craft, handmade glass, jewellery and trinkets, turkey orders, Christmas puddings, smoked salmon from the Ilsington Country House Hotel, wacky woolens and South Devon lavender and crafts amongst many and many more. There are also, I'm going to bring my two girls along on Sunday as well, there's going to be activities for the children. It's going to include craft workshops, face painting and of course the Santa's Grotto for the students. So if any of you can come along it would be then great to see you. Other than that, everybody, have a lovely weekend and thank you very much again for the students.